Before I begin, may I say what an honor it is to be here. Just my presence here proves to my children that I have a modicum of intelligence. <laughs> we start circa 335 BC, Athens, with Aristotle on why poetry is better than history. It is not the function of the poet to relate what has happened, but what may happen, what is possible according to the law of probability or necessity. The poet and the historian differ not by writing in verse or in prose. The work of the historian Herodotus might be put into verse, and it would still be a species of history with meter, no less than without it. The true difference is that one relates what has happened, the other what may happen. Poetry, therefore, is more philosophical and a higher thing than history. For poetry tends to express the universal. History, the particular. By the universal, I mean how a person of a certain type will on occasion speak or act according to the law of probability or necessity. And it is this universality at which poetry aims in the name she attaches to the personages. The particular is what history is limited to. What the statesman, orator, and general Asabiades did or suffered, and nothing more. What is possible is credible. What has not happened, we do not at once feel sure to be possible. But what has happened is manifestly possible. Otherwise, it would not have happened. <laughs> we now go circa the year 759, Wazhou, China. The Chinese poet and politician, and thank you for saying his name because I didn't know, Du Fu on how small history is compared to the power of nature. Beneath long pine winds, streams twist. Gray rats scuttle among ancient roof tiles. I don't know whose palace this once was, bequeathed beneath isolate cliffs to ruin. Its dark rooms flooded with blue ghost flame. Its manicured paths washed away. Earth's 10,000 sounds are the true music. Autumn colors couldn't care less about exquisite women, their rouge and mascara sham that graced gold carriages. Nothing but brown earth now. Of those regal affairs, only a stone horse remains. Sitting grief sticks sitting grief-stricken in wild grass. I sing wildly, wiping away tears. Here amid this sprawling journey of history's unfurling, what would a rich and long life even be? Finally, 1902, Chicago. American humorist Finley Peter Dunn on why history can't be true. I know history isn't true, because it ain't like what I see every day on Halstead Street in Chicago. <laughs> if anyone comes along with a history of Greece or Rome that will show me the people fighting, getting drunk, making love, getting married, owing the grocery man, and being without hard coal, then I'll believe there was a Greece or Rome, but not before. <laughs> Historians are like doctors. They're always looking for symptoms. Those of them that write about their own time examines their tongues, uh, feels the pulse, and makes a wrong diagnosis. The other kind of history is a post-mortem examination. It tells you what a country died of, but I'd like to know what it lived of. <laughs> 